Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna to show you how I like to sample into the record buffers of the OctaTrack. There are so many ways you can sample on the OctaTrack. This might not even be the most efficient way to sample the way that I'm trying to sample. So tell me how wrong I am down in the comments. This method has just kind of worked for me when I have some external gear plugged in. Beep. I hope this blue glare looks cool and not obnoxious. We'll find out when we go to edit. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna show you all of the settings that you need to use and how I like to set it up. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a through machine and I'm using track three here. You can see I have inputs plugged into input A and B and that's a stereo input. And that is set up by setting the through machine to have input A and B active as the input. And then I just crank the volume. In order to get this to work, you're gonna to wanna to put a trig down at the start of your pattern. If there's no trig, you're not gonna get any sound. So you have to put a trig down and there's still not gonna be any sound. You can't see, but I'm playing the keys on the mini log. What you have to do is you have to press play once that trig is down. Now that I've pressed play, you'll be able to hear the sound coming through. If like me, you hit double stop very frequently to cut off tails when your pattern is ending, it will cut off the sound. So you have to hit play again. And now the sound will come through. Gotta love the OctaTrack. So that's really all we have to do for our through machine. Just put whatever input you want to sample into whatever sample track you want to use. Um, so again, we're using a through machine on track three. So this determines how we're gonna set up the track we wanna use to play back what we are recording. And I do this on two separate tracks using a through machine, primarily for monitoring purposes. There are different ways to monitor, but again, this is just the way I do it. I record my samples before I construct the rest of my beat. If you do that differently, this might not be the best method for you, but bear with me, I'll explain. So I have track four here, and track four is set up as a flex machine. So you can see the source is a flex machine, and that flex machine is assigned to recording buffer three. So what we want is we want to record from buffer three, the buffer that has a track that we're monitoring, because recording buffer three is associated with track number three, and that is going to be played back by track number four. So we're hearing the track as we sample it on track three, and it is being played back on track four. If you notice, I've got track four muted, and I've placed down all of these trigs. And I'm doing that so that we can record without the track playing back. Speaking of recording, how do we set that up? Well, first we wanna make sure that we have a metronome set up, and we're gonna go into project, control, metronome. And you wanna make sure that the pre-roll is set to one bar or however many bars of a count in you want. And you wanna set it to your cue or your main volume, whatever you're using to, to listen to your sound to monitor and just make sure that you can hear it. So I'm gonna turn the click on again. You can shortcut turning the click on by holding function and hitting mix. So off, on, there it is. There's our metronome. We're at 100 BPM right now. Now we're gonna get into the good stuff. And by the good stuff, I mean the confusing stuff. Uh, and that is the record menus. So again, we have a track on our through machine so we can hear it. We have a bunch of trigs, which I will get to on track four. And this is kind of something that I set up beforehand as I was messing with this. And I can show you how it can kind of create some magic as you get your recording sort of plopped into place. But we're gonna go into the record menus. So one, two, three. They don't do anything if you just touch them, but you gotta hold function and touch them. And then you're gonna be brought to the recording setup menus. And we're gonna visit all of these menus right now. So um, I've been playing with these and I put some settings here, which you can check out so you can mimic these settings. Um, you can set the record length to max. I like to set it to 64 actually, just because then it will cut off when the pattern cuts off, but we're gonna put down a one-shot trig that will uh, disengage the recorder once the pattern loops through once, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, I believe these might come with default settings, but I turn input C and D and source three, which is usually set to main, I turn those off and I just make sure in AB is set to AV. So that means we're all set up to listen to those two inputs. For recording menu two, this is something that I also do. Um, so you wanna make sure that your volume is all the way up on AB. And I don't know how much of a difference this makes to be honest, but people put these, this is fade in and fade out. I put them at the lowest minimal settings. So just in case there's any sort of clicking that happens as a recording engages, if you've got like a transient that's clipped in a weird way, it kind of prevents that from being picked up. And it's like a negligible difference in terms of how much time it's gonna cut off of the recording. So that's always a safe bet to make. Once we're done, we're gonna go into the record three menu. And this is where we're going to save our recording because if you power off the OctaTrack without saving your recording, you lose everything that's in the buffers, which is very sad because the OctaTrack saves everything else. 
through a power cycle, but it doesn't save the recording buffers. So you can make the craziest, coolest bunch of samples, recording all your buffers here, there, every which way, and you just turn it off without thinking because the Octatrack will save it. Uh, but no, no, it doesn't. Uh, you have to save that recording buffer and you can save it to a sample slot. I'll show you how to do that after. So those are our settings. Um, I like to go to uh, the Rec 1 menu and we're going to put down, we're gonna get rid of this trig that I have here, but we're gonna put down a recorder trig. We're gonna put it on step one because that's where we want to start recording. But we also wanna turn this into a one-shot trig because I only want this to record once. I don't want it to record every time the pattern cycles through because I'm not performing. I'm just sampling to mangle and to play with later. So in order to change that regular trig into a one-shot trig, hold function and press the trig. It turns yellow. It's a one-shot trig. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna arm your recording trigs. So hold function and hit yes to arm. And you'll see it says arm record track. And you can disarm it by hitting no, rearm it by hitting yes. So what I'm gonna do now before we actually record is I'm just going to sort of audition. I'm gonna practice what I'm gonna play because I suck at the keyboard. And messing up is kind of annoying because at least what I do, this is again, probably wrong. There's probably an easier way to do this, but I go to uh, the sample slot menu and I clear out the recording buffer that way. And I'll show you what that looks like too. So I'm just gonna tinker on the, the keyboard and uh, I'll zoom out so you can watch. So that pattern is the second half of a, a phrase in the song Ironworks by Baths. I've been just teaching myself some stuff on keyboard because I suck at keyboard. And that's one way to get better is to just teach yourself stuff. So we're gonna record that sample and we're gonna do it right now. And if I mess up, I will show you that as an example of how you can clear out your recording buffers and start from scratch. So here we go. Okay, we messed up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sample slot selection and we're gonna make sure we have recording buffer three highlighted and you're gonna hold function and hit clear just as you would with like a pattern or something like that. And then it will say clear contents of this recording and you're gonna hit yes. That to my knowledge is the quickest way to clear out a recording buffer. So again, we're gonna go into the rec menu, make sure that our trig is placed and that it's armed and we should be good to go now. Okay, fantastic. Boop. So now we're gonna, we don't need our through machine anymore, uh, but we do wanna be able to hear our recording track and let's turn off our metronome and listen to what we've got. <laughs> of course, this is happening now. Aha, I made a mistake. I was recording while I had track four selected. So we were recording onto recording buffer four, um, even though we had recording three selected. Although I suppose what we could do now is go to recording buffer four and select that as the source and then... Oh yes, this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> so even, even if you make a very silly and easy to mistake, which the Octatrack uh, excels at making me do, um, you can sometimes think your way out of the hole. Uh, so what I did is instead of recording to buffer three, which I wanted to do, which was the through machine that we were on, I was recording because I had track four selected, I was recording to, uh, to buffer four. So even though we were hearing from the through machine, we were recording to rec four on track four, which we can still hear, which is cool. So if you remember, I had set all of these these slots up, um, and what I want to do is create a slice grid uh, because that sounds chaotic. So I want to create a new slice grid with 16 slices. And uh, so again, you hold function and hit the audio editor button, the AED, and then I'm making 16 slices. I'm going to align the markers to zero crosses to reduce pops and clicks and such. And then once you've done that, if you hit yes again, you can bring up all these options to select your options. And the option I'm going to select is to create random locks. Actually, I'm gonna show you linear locks first, just so you can hear, we're gonna alter those. So that's kind of cool, right? What I really want is a more random sound though, rather than a sort of a replication of the pattern in a glitchy way. So let's listen to this. 
This is cool, right? That's how you play a passage of anything on any instrument and get a cool glitchy beat. Um, of, of course, I did add some percussion here. Uh, I created this beat with some samples. So I have tracks five, six, and seven doing a little simple kick snare hi-hat thing. And then I have this matched up with this loop from the bath display sample pack because I've got to play baths over baths. This scene, I have something pretty cool set up. I have the retrig, uh, the retrig turned up, and the retrig timing parameter locked to this slice. And I also have delay set up on this track too. So um, I, again, I, I set these parameters up along with the the specific trigs before we got started because I kind of knew I wanted to do something cool and glitchy, and you can do that and really just surprise yourself. making a dumb AF beat on a Monday night. It's Tuesday. What am I doing? <laughs> 